small changes, big results. This is the unsexy and realistic answer that's very simple that most people don't want to accept because in social media, it's all shown as this big hype. It's this big kind of all these gurus and these educators that are super confident and they're so passionate and they're talking about their interests so fast and it's all, the, this is the new thing, this is the best thing and this is gonna actually change your life, just follow on, hop onto my course, these sorts of things. And then they have like this, oh, the guide to the millionaire's routines and these sorts of things. And it's all these fads and none of them are actually aimed at the people that actually need to change. They, they are just causing these people that can't change, like me, that struggled so long to change, that couldn't make a shift and thought maybe I'm just one of those persons that's not going to change, that I'm just going to always be like this and not going to be one of those people. And it's because it plays into their emotions, it creates this rise and like that gets them excited and hooked onto this thing. And that's why they can't change because they're always getting excited and hooked on this big rise and then they fall down and hit reality. And since their baseline is so low because they're used to being stimulated so high, they can't even do the basic things like cleaning their room, doing the dishes and those sorts of things. And I struggled for ages. I had the messiest room until maybe like last year when I decided I actually needed to like actually clean my room a little bit because it was just so disgusting and I really hated living in the, this messy environment. So after all these systems and all these gurus, even look at them, lots of them rise and fall as well, just like the emotions that they spark. For example, Luther King, you know, he had this big kind of company, this big kind of idea that he was pushing out and then it unraveled beneath him and the big hype crashed. The simple remains, the long-term answers remain, not what is fast, what's immediate, what's playing on your dopaminergic system. And for me, I was someone who was always calm and I was always kind of, I'm a very like reserved kind of look, held, held back kind of person. I don't really deal well with high energy kind of things. It makes me too stressed out and anxious, I found. And I thought that, oh, maybe I just need to get better at dealing with that. But my optimal level isn't at that higher energy kind of thing. It's, it's low, it's where I'm more calm, where because otherwise my mind just runs too fast and I'm way too anxious. And a lot of these systems and ideas, like these millionaire routines and that sort of stuff, or like this perfect protocol to stop your aging and these sorts of things, there's so many components to them that it just becomes this procrastination schedule where you're actually missing out on the things that are actually getting you results in your life that are actually adding value to your life and you're getting caught in these kind of systems that don't really work. And finally, change is slow. It takes time to see results. It's take time. It takes time to change. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. To cool my ego and realize that I have to start small. In Atomic Habits, which I've read multiple times, it took me three years to catch on to this lesson. Get Just get 1% better every day. And by the end of the year, you'll be 37 times better than you were at the start. Now, this is another one of those ideas that kind of hypes you up and down. It's like, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. But in reality, it's really kind of simple and really basic. And it's not that fun. It's just having these systems, these habits in place that hold entropy at bay, that keep back the tide that's going to keep continuing the messy cycle. And... Another thing I wanted to state was, when has big change ever worked for you? When have you done a big change where you've completely changed something and it's just worked out and created this lasting change? Oftentimes it doesn't really stick around because you haven't built a system and you have it to kind of keep that up. And for me, recently, about a month ago, I decided that our, our house was quite messy and I wanted to start doing more dishes because there was just this massive pile of just all these dishes there and I realized that every time I cook, I just start and wash some dishes. And I didn't try and take it all at once. I didn't try and get all excited and go, oh, I'm going to wash this all and then it's going to be perfect. Because I've done that countless times in the past. I'd seen my family do that countless times in the past. They make this big change and then they don't have any systems to hold that system in place. So then it falls apart and it goes back to being messy yet again. You can see I'm getting really emotional about this. <laughs> um... But I realized that 
eventually, if I just do these 1% things every day, if I just wash a couple dishes every time I make a meal or go into the kitchen and I do that and I continue that and then maybe in a couple weeks I can do a couple more dishes and maybe I can start wiping benches and that. And it worked. I realized that if I looked long term, I would eventually beat back this mess and my systems would be in place where I would have this healthy and clean lifestyle where I would my level of systems and the level of action that I was taking would be higher than the mess and the entropy that was coming into my life. Entropy just means um, that things will slide backwards. They'll go into chaos and disorder if there's nothing kind of stopping it. That's like the natural way or the law of the universe and kind of the world. <laughs> so for me, this is kind of a roller coaster of emotions. And I really had to learn to pull back my ego, just tap into reality, find out where I actually was, be realistic with my actions and just start. And this doesn't have to do with dishes. This can be with any goal that you want. And I just want you to know that creating these systems, creating these habits is the most important thing you can do because doing these small changes day after day and building the habit then when you have bad days, it becomes much easier to continue this thing where you would normally would have dropped off. And I've realized this a lot because there's been so many days in the past weeks where I haven't felt like working out. I haven't felt like cleaning. I've just done it anyway because it's become such a habit and it's a lot easier for me to do it than to not do it. And I don't give myself much more of an alternative and not giving myself any alternative to that also makes it a lot easier to do these things because if I gave myself the alternative, oh, I could watch YouTube or maybe I could just play some video games or watch a movie or something, then that level is very high in dopamine and that's going to make me feel even less motivated to do anything because it's just going to be playing in the, into my systems of just getting addicted to these things. And then when I try and do something simple like washing, a di washing the dishes, it seems so boring and mundane, like why would I do that? But once I've removed these kind of things and and my level's kind of gone back down and I've learned to stick to these systems, build these habits, just trust, trust in the suffering and the discomfort that it's causing me because I was going in the direction where I wanted to go because I created a vision for my life, which was a very important stage because it helped me gain clarity on where I was going, where I wanted to go and what I needed to do to change. And these changes, is slow and hard, like I said before, and small changes create big results. Thank you for watching. My name's Malin, and I'll see you in the next video.